Although to this day, um, I just stammer sometimes when I have to say my. Look, you can't tell me that the, the reason I stammer is because I do not relax. So I have not been relaxed for the 24 years I have lived in this earth. Of course not. Name, but most of the time I can say my name fluently. But back in nursing school, I couldn't say my name at all because I struggled on the A sound. You have to speak compassionately and fluently. So this is a part two of this beautiful soul's story. You know, in nursing school, it is often divided into two. I, I, I had a lot of... I had a lot of bad experiences in nursing school because of my stomach. So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Izini Talks, the Nigerian YouTuber of stammering, storytelling, lifestyle and vlogs. If you are Ochi here, thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for reaching out to me in times um, of commenting. If you are new on, onto this channel, hello, I am Izini Talks. Would you love to subscribe to my channel? Of course you would love to. Please do just that. So this is a part two of this beautiful soul's story yeah so i'll leave um the link of the part one somewhere here so you, you could just go and watch that if you hadn't and also share like subscribe and um, comment also i love to see um, comments so things started to go downhill when i started school of nursing because my stomach although it was severe in high school it was manageable I, I graduated in 2016, high school, and then between 2016, September to 2017, May, it was a big gap of months. So during this period of time, I just, I was a bit of an antisocial person. <clears throat> I was an introvert. I was just using my phone, staying in my room all day. So when the moment came where I had to start college, meet new people, start having classes, doing presentations, so it that's where I believe my real anxiety started because I would be afraid to even speak to people. Uh, you know, in, in the Gambia, I had um, I had an idea to visit other lecturers and tell them I have a stammer, but there was a part of me that told me they would they, they wouldn't they wouldn't you know care or they wouldn't listen. Not that I'm saying that is the case, but I was having this reluctancy to disclose it to them because you know back in Gambia, stammering was seen as something hilarious and not something that is worth taking serious or something that is a disability. You know the first day you meet new people, your new lecturer ar arrives and then she calls the register. I was surprised that the same register that I was running away from in high school is the same register that would now meet me in nursing school. So I was a bit anxious. Although to this day, um, I just stammer sometimes when I have to say my name, but most of the time I can say my name fluently. But back in nursing school, I couldn't say my name at all because I struggled on the A sound. I struggled on the A sound. So people would ask me my name and then I would just have this huge block. Another experience was, you know, in nursing school, it is often divided into two. Theory and practical. So the theory part is the one you stay in class, do all these classwork, assignments and examinations. And the practical is the one where you go for placements like clinicals to the hospitals and then you will do all these nursing skills. And then at the end of your placement, you maybe you will be in the hospital for like six to eight weeks and then at the end of the eight week they will the school will bring the lecturers 
to assess you to know how well you can do a skill for example giving injection all this stuff so those assessments used to give me big anxiety big big anxiety because nursing assessments you would have to you know nursing is a field that requires a lot of communication when you are speaking to the patients you know their families the doctors the nurses everyone you have to speak compassionately and fluently so it was a big issue for me because i couldn't speak fluently so one of the um there was a day i had to do a nursing skill and then um i was in the hospital the lecturers arrived to start the assessment it was me and four other students as well so they all did theirs as i was about to do my own i called the lecturer i told her um look i have a stammer so i can be nervous sometimes and sometimes you're gonna understand what i'm saying because of my stammer so she said don't worry relax take a deep breath and you know those things are like music i've had them i've had of like i've had it all of the time and it doesn't work i don't know if i should say this of course i should fluent speakers should learn to not think that they know something about stammering when they in most times do not i have also seen that even people who are speech therapists so people who stammer are mostly fluent speakers so believe me you just have a um a book experience of 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 what this condition is, is about you can't ask someone to relax look you can't tell me that the, the reason i stammer is because i do not relax so i have not been relaxed for the 24 years i have lived in this earth of course not so the moment she said take a deep, uh, deep breath relax a part of me wanted to tell her that doesn't work but i just said you know what just do what you can do you have worked hard you have come a long way so you can do this immediately the assessment started you know as a stammer myself is it i think it is okay to stammer to people but i had this misconception that stammering is bad that i needed to work on myself that i needed to talk fluently and i have an examination that i need to talk, to talk fluently so all this built up an anxiety that i i didn't necessarily need to have so as soon as the assessment started i started to have big anxiety big big anxiety and this in this assessment you have to explain whatever you are doing to the patient whatever you are doing so and in the assessment you are not allowed to use local languages and for me i was more fluent in local languages than in english so i started to speak in english i was stuttering really bad very very bad so the assessor was just looking at me like what is he saying? Are you sure you want to do this? Are you nervous? Are you this? I know you have a trauma, but just relax, you can do this. And then, I, as soon as, the one mistake I did was to see, was to look at people's reaction to my stammering and see it as something bad. Because the assessor was looking at me, you know, you know, lots of lecturers, whenever it, it is exam time, even if you are their best friend, they will not even smile at you. <laughs> they will just do like this. And they will just wait, wait, wait for you to do the right things. So as soon as I saw her doing this and all this, frowning her face, not smiling, I said, ah, it's not a good day. So it went very bad, it went very bad. But I, I was still able to, you know, say everything I wanted to say, but which huge blocks and everything. So that moment was very embarrassing for me as well. But, you know, I just went home. I said, it is what it is. If it's going to be, it is going to be. And surprisingly, I passed that exam. So I graduated nursing school in 2020. I started to work with the Ministry of Health 
in Gambia. I, I worked for about nine months. And um, towards me graduating, my speech got a little bit better. I was, you know, I was no more nervous to stammer in front of people, even though some were going to laugh at me. I just laughed with them because I got to a point where I couldn't be bothered about them laughing at the way I speak because that is how I am. Oh my God, I love this. I tell this to people a lot. Learn to love your stammer. The world will adjust to it. Stop making excuses or putting people's feeling or thoughts about your stammer like in your mind. It makes no sense. Like it has never made sense. So accepting yourself is a beautiful way. So when I graduated nursing school, in fact, nursing school, most of my class, my classmates, they were all matured. I was literally few of the youngest people in my class. So most of them were, you know, in their 20s, 30s, 40s. I was in my 20s as well, but my day, I was in their early 20s. They were in their late and, you know, 30s, 40s. So they were very matured. I never had an incident where some of my classmates laughed at me. And I guess that really helped with my self-esteem and, you know, because if I'm stammering and people are not laughing at me, it shows that they have this level of maturity and awareness that, okay, this is a bit disability. So let me bear with him to give him time to speak. I graduated with a diploma um, in nursing. So I had it in my mind to do my bachelor's degree in nursing here in the UK. At first I was a bit reluctant because I didn't want to travel to the UK because I was, a part of me was afraid that you, you, you would have to do a lot of, you know, talking to, to everyone. And, and I was a little bit nervous, so I didn't apply initially. But then uh, about a month later, I just said, look, um, I have come this far, so I will just apply for it anyway. So that's how I just applied for a nursing course here in the UK. And then I got my acceptance letter. And then long story short, I got my visa and uh, went straight to the UK where, where I am now. So traveling to the UK um, at first was a bit overwhelming for me. And um, especially being someone who has never traveled before and uh, moving to a completely new country and environment full of different people. So it was a bit overwhelming at first. And some of the culture, the, some of the culture shocks were that, you know, UK has, um, you know, UK has people from all over the world. So you have a lot, you have lots of restaurants, lots of cuisines, that sell multicultural food. So another shock was that there were no ceiling fans and there were no air condition. Although it was, so I arrived in the UK. I arrived in the winter and it was naturally cold outside. It was very cold. So there was no need to switch on any air conditioner. There were, there's actually heaters inside the room so you can switch on the heater if you feel cold but there's no ceiling fan for whenever you feel hot you will just have to open the window or buy a standing fan that you can just place near your bed or chair so another shock is uh, the use of languages people here in the uk can although it is english but they have lots of slangs that they use that only british people can understand or only if you have been here for a long time that you will know what they are speaking about. Some of them have different accents, some of them have different slangs that they use. So in the beginning, it was hard for me to understand um, what exactly they were speaking about. But then as time went by, I started to understand. I made a lot of research and, you know, I got used to it now. So now literally I can just walk outside and speak to someone and he can just use slangs and then I will know what he is talking about. 
Here in the UK, stammering is seen as something that people are well informed about. I will not say um, that that everyone in the UK is well informed about it, but you know, most of them. You even have some stammering support groups, you know, people who meet every weekend or every month or every twice a year to meet as a group. I'm speaking like 50 to 100 people will meet as a group, meet at a, maybe a big restaurant or a big hall and speak about the things they are going through. And this is something I don't see happening in Africa. Um, you know, it doesn't happen quite a lot. It has never happened in the Gambia, by the way. I have never seen a stammering support group in the Gambia or any, you know, sort of event that is dedicated to people who stammer. So to sort of find support. So, like I said earlier, when I speak my local languages, I don't stutter very bad as opposed to when I speak English. But that has changed um, over the past year. Now I am more comfortable with the English and some words just flow out naturally. I believe I am more fluent now than I used to be back in nursing school back home in the Gambia and that has helped with me, with my anxiety it has boosted my confidence and self-esteem as well so most of my co-workers here know that I have a tama so they, they they try to let me voice out they try to let me speak whatever I want to say and although you can have some nursing is a field that even if you don't have a stama, you can have a bad day at work, you can have a good day at work, depending on, you know, how the day go, how the day goes, whether you have been supported, whether they are helping or not. So imagine being in a profession where you could have a good day sometimes, you can have a bad day sometimes, and you also have um, stammering as well which could also give you good days, which could also give you bad days. So the problem is the disaster comes when you have a bad day at work and you have a bad day with your speech as well. So working in the NHS as a nurse who stammers can be quite difficult sometimes because you can have good days, you can have bad days. And nursing is a field that requires a lot, lots of communications, lots of speaking, lots of voicing out. So you, you can have a day where you can go and your speech is very bad throughout the day. And you can have days where you can go and, you know, be more calm and relaxed. So that's why I try to meditate because it helps. And that's it as in talks. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I feel like if I'm to talk about tamarin and my experiences, I will be here the whole day, literally. And I could make a whole 24 hour video on it, but I'm glad we will be working together in this. So I, I'm even thinking about, you know, creating um, a YouTube channel for myself to raise awareness about tamarin in the Gambia, because I feel like it is it is not given much recognition and people who are in high schools in universities who stama they are not receiving the required support that they need because i believe that stammering is just the tip of the iceberg you've got the whole emotional and mental aspect of it beneath so if you get rid of all the anxiety depression and all the worrying that you are worried about how people are going to react to the way you speak if you get rid of all of that you would you would realize that stammering is not as bad as you think it is people in this life in the, the reality is people are genuinely worried about themselves they are concerned about themselves and many don't really mind that you speak differently once you realize that you will start to feel more calm and confident about yourself because you know um once you see it as a bad thing people are also going to notice that you are seeing it as a bad thing 
you have that university that you want to apply to you have that job that you want to apply to apply it regardless don't listen to people saying that you can't do this you can't do that or you can't do anything because of the way you speak make it a part of you and be confident about yourself i know it's not easy because as a tamara myself i went through times where i just sat at home and not go out because i was anxious to speak to people but now i just go out and do it anyway because the the way people see you is not a reflection of who you are you can be a good person and you can still meet some people who don't see you as a good person so you are not really there to impress anyone you're just there to be yourself and the right people will see you and i'm not here to you know give you the go ahead that everything will be easy nothing will be easy it will be hard you 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 can go to good days you can have bad days but the most important thing is to keep moving regardless of whether it's a good day or or, or a bad day you keep moving just just really just remember that um when the things start to get very difficult just know you are close to your goal so thank you very much i can swear that i am a gambian person with a stammer who has experienced what it's like to experience a um, bully in gambia and also live um, lives in the UK as a registered nurse. Abdallah's story is a story that is interesting to listen, and you could actually, you know, um, um, you know, like um, have a mental picture of each word as he says it. Abdallah, from the depth of, of my heart, I am so grateful. Thank you for for um, searching me out. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for putting in the work. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for lending your voice. As I said earlier, I am just opportune to hold the mic for you. This is your story, and your story is beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you also, viewers. If you have made it to this part of the video. Thank you and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment and yeah, bye.